everybody, it's Katie, and I wanted to make a quick video today just on the topic of the confusion of alcohol addiction. Um, I've just been reflecting on this lately because, you know, I've been on the Sinclair Method for almost a year, which has been an absolute lifesaver for me and totally undone my addiction to alcohol. Um, but the longer I am removed from that experience of being addicted to alcohol, the more I realize just what a tumultuous and confusing experience it was for the better part of a decade. Um, so just want to talk about this a little bit today. Maybe some of you can relate um, to something I've been thinking about. So the first thing I want to talk about, of course, is the cravings and the drivers to drink. And I've talked about this in other videos, but when you're addicted to alcohol, it's a biological addiction that is hardwired in your brain. So no matter how much you try to talk yourself out of it or, you know, rationally overcome it, um, it's not going to be a effective for most people because it's a biologically hardwired addiction. So for me, there were so many times where I would want to take long breaks from drinking or I would over drink or I would say I was just going to have two and then I'd end up having way more than two. Um, and so it was always this really conflicting experience where my intentions going into drinking were to not binge, but then once I started um, drinking, I would overdo it. Or, you know, I'd commit to not drinking for this amount of time, but then I'd always give in after a couple of days. And I, I never could understand that or, or get to why that was because, um, again, it was just an unconscious biolog biological driver that was causing these cravings. Um, and they were overbearing. I couldn't, with my conscious, rational mind, um, undo that. And while I could, you know, white knuckle it or force it or just have really good willpower for a while, it would always lead to me drinking again. Um, so that was just always this back and forth experience I had, um, which the Sinclair Method has totally just removed that from my system. You know, I no longer have cravings when I do drink, which is very rarely nowadays. Um, I never have more than two beverages. Um, so it's just been a lifesaver in that regard. Um, next, I want to talk about the aspect of social drinking. So um, for me, I, could, I would always be invited out to, you know, go to happy hours, go wine tasting, parties, like there is alcohol everywhere social for social drinking. And, you know, many people I would hang out with, they would seem, you know, to be able to handle their alcohol, have one or two drinks, not get too drunk. And here I was like always drinking way too much. Um, but with the social drinking, it's everywhere. And I notice, um, especially where I live, there's just more and more wine shops and beer shops and the alcohol industry just seems to be booming. And it's more and more something that um, people are doing with their free time. Um, not everybody, but I just notice it more. There are people out on the weekends, on patios, having beers or wine or whatever. Um, so it's really becoming this socially acceptable thing. And so I remember when I was full on in my addiction, it was like, I felt like it wasn't serving me, you know, but then it was like this socially acceptable thing where everyone seemed really happy and to enjoy it and it's offered everywhere. And so, you know, it must not be that bad if it's all over the place. So that was something that was conflicting for me as well. Um, with that too, you know, for celebratory occasions, alcohol is always a factor, almost always a factor. So um, going into it, I would love to drink champagne or wine or beer going into a celebratory occasion. And to me, it had this almost innocence to it in that regard because I was using the alcohol to have fun, to celebrate, to make light of a situation. But then I would always, almost always overdo it. And then I would get myself in trouble and fall into this dark place of, you know, regret and shame and just guilt around overdoing it. Um, and so the cycle would just continue. And so that was, that was conflicting for me because yes, it can be, can be a celebratory thing, but if you're someone who is addicted to alcohol, um, often that celebratory thing turns into something, something totally different. Um, even if you don't intend it to, or don't want it to, again, it's just that biological driver causing you to drink and drink and drink. Um, and then lastly, the advertising of it. So I know for me, whenever I see an ad that involves alcohol, everyone looks like they're having so much fun. It's a huge party or a beautiful setting and the people are always so beautiful. 
And so for me, like I'm realizing how much those advertisings have really impacted my unconscious behavior and how much they would immediately trigger me to crave a drink whenever I'd see, you know, someone out with a glass of red wine in a beautiful valley wine tasting or people at a party or someone with a beer on the beach. It was like an immediate trigger for me to want, um, want a drink. So the advertising um, is really brilliantly done and and makes it look like it's this thing that beautiful people do in order to enjoy life and sure that happens but um, for me and for many others it can lead to or just perpetuate this this addiction to alcohol um, so just wanted to speak a little bit about that today I'm curious if any of you have had these thoughts or experiences would love to hear from you thank you